Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Seclusion. One of the things that my subs like about my channel, kind of come to expect, is I'll review anything, anything and everything related to shooting, not just the, the big ticket high-end guns. I also like to cover the small stuff, things that you know a lot of us are looking for, shopping for, things like trigger pull gauges. You know, not everybody's going to want one, but a lot of us would be interested. And, you know, there's not exactly a ton of videos out there doing comparisons. And those are some of the things that I like to do. You know, whether you do a ton of shooting or not, pretty much any and all of us that like to shoot, we do like a nice trigger. And a lot of times we're curious, you know, what is the difference in the triggers? And, you know, what's the pull weight? What's the break On my trigger and really the only way to find out is other than looking at the info the specs that they have online is to find out for yourself now when it comes to trigger pull scales and gauges it's not like there's a huge variety out there a ton of options we've got a couple of springs we've got a couple of digital ones what's the difference we you know they range in price from $19 to $50 so you know, depending on what I'm wanting it for, which is going to be right for you. Okay, so I got a hold of two pretty common ones. You know, the, the classic Wheeler Spring. This is the cheapest that I can find. I've actually had this one for like 10 years. You know, it's always done well, but the thing is, is you know, I really didn't know how accurate it was. I've been doing a lot of reviews on triggers and stuff. I love a match grade trigger. So I thought, well, maybe I need to upgrade. You know, maybe I need to get a better version. So I went with digital and pay more money. Let's take a look at compare, you know, the, the higher end digital versus, you know, the super kiss cheap spring. See how they stack up together. So if you follow my channel, you know, I like KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. So let's start with the KISS scale. Okay, so I'm going to start off here using my Wheeler. Just the old spring, good old-fashioned KISS. Keep it simple, stupid trigger pull scale. Got this years ago. Um, I think it's you can get these around $10. I've got it on my Amazon page. It's real simple. You pull and it just moves that dial up. And then when you let go, it stays there. And then you just reset so let's see what we get on my Trigger Tech AR9 using the spring scale. One nice thing with the wheeler, it just it goes in any direction. Just about three and a half. About the same. It's coming in consistently, three and a half. Three and a half. That one was up close to four. Three and a half. Hey guys, if you like this video, if you follow Beyond Seclusion, help support Beyond Seclusion, it is really easy. All you got to do is go to our webpage, use these links anytime you go to these to buy anything. That helps support Beyond Seclusion. The other one is our Amazon page. That's a huge one. I've got my crazy stupid deals there, optics, anything that I can find on Amazon, I put there. And if you go in through this link, anything that you purchase on Amazon helps support Beyond Seclusion. The other one is is my Patriot t-shirts and my swag. These are now available on Tandem Cross. Check them out. All this helps support Beyond Seclusion. The easiest way to use the links in the Amazon is simply save them as bookmarks. And anytime you go to Amazon or you go to Cabela's or any of these, just click on that link. And anything that you get helps support Beyond Seclusion. Guys, I couldn't do it without your help. Thank you. Okay, so that was the kiss. Let's go with the Lyman, the digital. Here's the thing. They claim that they are 20 times more accurate than the spring scales. They also boast that they are the world's most accurate trigger gauge. So let's see, put their money where their mouth is and see how it holds up. 
This comes, it's got a little clip here. It holds that. We can turn it 360 and then it's gonna lock in 90 degree positions once we get it all the way up. So we can turn and then it locks. So we can pull from that direction. Now to change the angle, we just push it in a little bit. Whoops. And we can go this way. Okay, and then it's set that way. And then same thing, we just go all the way around. Now to turn it on, we just hit any button. And we've got pounds or kilograms. So there's kilograms. We're gonna go back to pounds. Now hitting the clear button is gonna get rid of any memory for doing an average. So we'll just do that. And then we're gonna do ready. And it gives you the beep, and that says that it's ready to go. Got 2.7. That one came 3.6. 2.11. Two 2.12. Three six two ten two eight two fourteen two nine. Now I can keep going all the way up to ten and then I can hit average. That's one thing that I do like about the digital. And it gives us the average of all that we pulled until we hit clear. So we got 213, we hit clear, and now we could start over. Okay, so we get a little bit different than these. This tends to show up, at least it looks like a little bit heavier than the digital. So I got to thinking, you know, what is, what's a way I can kind of try to best gauge how well calibrated they are. And in my twisted warped mind, I come up with Van Camp's pork and beans. So I got out my food scale here. Of course then, is that calibrated? But I think we can get this sorted out. Okay, about 1.1 and it says 15 ounces. Same here, 1.1. One point one. Right. Let's open up the can of beans, dump the beans out, and then we'll weigh the beans and the can, and then we're gonna come back to those and do a little test here. Okay, so we empty the beans in here. Hopefully we'll get 15 ounces. Oh, I like that. 14.9. 14.9. Now let's see what the can weighs. All right, so this scale is pretty much spot on, guys. So I think now let's test those. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in a, a ultralight bag. I don't know, we'll see if it weighs anything. I doubt it. 0.2. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up my beans in my thick and chunky salsa, and we'll see which of these two is giving us the more accurate, consistent reading. Okay, so we got the Van Camps. I'm gonna start off with this one. Do you like the bean test? I like the bean test. Let's try the digital with Van Camps.
1.35. Okay, guys, as always, got to be totally honest. I was completely shocked at the result. I totally expected the digital to way outperform the spring. Uh, what I came up with, um, to me, it's a no-brainer. The cheap KISS version, I think that's going to do the vast majority of you just fine. You know, one nice thing is, is I can do an average with this. Um, but anyway, that's what I came up with. You guys decide which one is right for you and what you think of my test results. If you want to see some more calibration, I do some chunky salsa after the credits. You can check that out and see just a little bit more how the two compare up. There you go, guys. My KISS test using digital versus spring and a can of Van Camp beans. Hopefully you found this helpful. Be sure to like, comment, and don't forget to sub. Till next time, guys, happy shooting and be safe. Got a PSA 300 blackout here. We'll just test another trigger on this. Got about four, four, six, four, 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 one, four, six. Four, three. Okay, let's see what we get with the, the wheeler. Four, five. Four, five. A little bit over on that one. I might have Four five. Four five. All right, let's see what the great value thick and chunky salsa weighs in at. Two point four three. Two point four four. Two point four three, two point four three. Yeah, let's see what the salsa weighs using our wheeler here. Okay, let's see what we get. Two point seven. Two point seven, two point seven three, two point six nine, two point six nine.